And, um, you know, we've been teaching on the psalmist's uh, message that his word, the word, is a lamp and a light. And we taught pen, ten principles that we thought really were illuminations in the word to help guide us on the path towards our hope and our dream and our desire and our God-given assignment. And then we came up with one more. <laughs> I, think, I think there's a lot more. But let's jump into this one because I'm very excited about it. And it is extremely important. Very. You want to know what it is? No, save it the surprise. Oh, okay. <laughs> we tell them at the end? No. <laughs> <laughs> if, um, if you're involved in leadership or you've been around this a lot, this will not come as a surprise to you. But we want to talk tonight about, because this, I'm going to tell you, it is such an important key, the spirit of excellence. That's right. Amen? Amen. How many have heard that before? Amen. The spirit of excellence. Amen? It's crucial. It's got to, you got to have it. Absolutely crucial. Amen. And often overlooked. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And excellence just isn't the things in the natural. It's things in your heart. Yeah. Amen. Uh, I'll just share real quick. Uh, I don't know. Uh, we were training in a, a new employee. And, uh, and so one of their jobs were, was on, you know, every morning, clean the windows, clean the glass, make sure everything, you know, looks good. Have you ever gone to a restaurant and the windows are filthy? Don't you wonder what is it like behind the scenes? <laughs> yeah. Amen. It makes you think twice. But anyhow, so we were just training about, you know, the importance of a first impression curb appeal, the windows, and uh, the new employee just turned to the person that was training them and said, it's just a window. And, uh, you know, we're all learning. It's never just a window. It's never just a window. And the person training this other person, their eyes about popped out of their head. And it's not just a window. <laughs> Amen. No. So we all run home tonight and check our windows. That's so, right. Okay. <laughs> But the spirit of excellence, let's review with Psalms uh, 119, verse 105. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Let's read it all together. One, two, three, read. Your, Your word is, is a lamp, lamp to, to my feet and a light to my path. path. Now, we've said it repeatedly that what the psalmist is saying there when he talks about a lamp to my feet your feet are where you currently right. are at and there's a word for your situation amen so if you're currently battling a challenge of some sort uh there's a word for that to help get you through that and get you into the victory yes. side of things so the mm. lamp to your feet that's your current situation a light to your path is where you're going it is your hope, your dream, your desire, your assignment, your God-given purpose in life. And there is word for that. And we've been talking about 10 principles from the word that illuminate the path as you're going towards your hope, your dream, your desire. Yeah. You know, we can get there much faster when we are yielded to the Holy Spirit, yep. listening to yes. his guidance yes. and his leading. Yes. And so and that's what this is all about. Yes. These things are proven. Jamie and Debbie live by these principles we've been teaching. Try to the best we can. We do, mm -hmm. yeah. All right, you want to read Daniel? Sure. Let's yeah, look. we're going to talk about Daniel tonight. Amen. All right, let's look at Daniel 5 and 11. In him was the spirit of the holy God, light and understanding and wisdom, like the wisdom of the gods were found in him. Verse 12. Inasmuch as an excellent spirit. Everybody say, an excellent spirit. An excellent spirit. That's what we're spirit. talking about tonight. Spirit of excellence. In Daniel, there was an excellent spirit, knowledge, understanding, interpreting dreams, solving riddles, explaining enigmas were found in this Daniel. Now I'm skipping down to verse 14. 
I have heard of you that the Spirit of God is, <coughs> excuse me, is in you and that the light and the understanding and excellent wisdom are found in you. Amen. Amen. So that's me. That's me. Amen. Amen. All right, Amen. let's go to Daniel 6 and 3. Daniel distinguished himself above the governors and satraps because an excellent spirit was in him. Wow. <laughs> Say, have I have an excellent spirit. I have an excellent spirit. <laughs> and in the Bible, if, if it wasn't important, God wouldn't have uh, brought this to us through the word of God. Amen. And, you know, Daniel overcame much uh, adversity. Mm -hmm. But, you know, nothing has to stop us from the level of living that we want to enjoy from the person that we want to be. If all that Daniel went through, if he could have an excellent spirit, I think we as a people and we as a church should have an excellent spirit as well. In Amen. fact, Daniel got through what he went through because, because he had it. an excellent spirit. And there's a lot to say about Daniel. We know Daniel was the great prophet. We know Daniel in the lion's den. We know Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace. We know that Daniel was carried away in the Babylonian captivity. He spent all of his life in that period of captivity from a young man to an old man. But amazingly enough, he never compromised never. on his faith. He never compromised on his religious routine. He never compromised on who he was in Hallelujah. God. He never gave an inch. He never backed up. And yet he excelled amazingly. Yeah, he amen. always rose to the top. In fact, he served under three foreign kings. They changed his name. They changed his culture. They changed his language. They changed everything about his environment because he was carried away as a captive. And yet, three different kings, from Nebuchadnezzar to Belshazzar to Darius and Cyrus, they all saw in him an excellent spirit, and they promoted him to a place of responsibility right. and rulership over their kingdom. Hallelujah. That's what an excellent spirit will do. Right, right. Mm -hmm. And I love the fact that he, you know, I, I'm sure that he faced pressure under these three kings at mm -hmm. first until they, you know, his reputation preceded him mm -hmm. and that he was known as a man of great wisdom and a man of an excellent spirit. He was, uh, and we'll read it here, but that he was such a man of wisdom. The Bible says that the kings put him above all the wise men. Yes. Now, now you know that you're being promoted when you're above the wisest of the wise. That's Amen. Right. That's right. Now, an, an excellent spirit works the same way today as it did back in Daniel's day. People see it, people recognize it, and people are attracted to mm -hmm. it. When, when you see things of excellence, it's like an a antique. Have you ever heard the phrase, uh, that's when they really used <laughs> to make things? Or that's when things wood. were made with <laughs> quality? Yeah. Or that's when they cared about how things were put together. And back in the day when things were handmade and things were not just so much assembly line type of approach, but the individual approach, um, things were made yes, well, wonderfully, beautifully, made well. and they, ha they held their quality. Right. Uh, have you ever seen Antique Roadshow on uh, PBS and whatnot? Well, some of the old tables and old chairs that people bring in have tremendous value because they were made so amazingly yeah, well. They were made to last. They were made with <clears throat> excellence. We were looking at some of mom and dad's furniture, you know, and, uh, and so we were talking about moving this, moving that, and I started just to pick up a little bit of it. And I said, oh, my goodness, <laughs> this is real wood. <laughs> you know, real wood, things done with excellence, is meant to last. Yeah. And, you know, there's a saying of That's what right. you compromise to get, you will have to compromise to keep. Yeah. And so 
the fact that Daniel, he did not have to compromise his standard. Uh, his core values. His core values, yeah, who he was. He, had, he right. kept his core values regardless of what the challenge was. That is so good. Yeah. yeah. Have you ever had somebody say, well, you know, why are you so picky about that? Ever done that? Or why are you so uh, strong about that point of view? Well, if it matches up with the Word of God, we should be strong about that point of view. Amen? Yeah, that's right. And if people can get us to compromise, to lower our standards, you know what happens? You no longer have the voice in their life that you had. Yeah. And that's why Daniel had such an, an amazing uh, legacy, an amazing reputation. He didn't change now we talk about situational ethics. Right. Hear that? That's You've right. ever heard that? Yeah. You know, well, I'll respond according to the situation. this situation. Yeah. Or how that people uh, compartmentalize their lives. Mm -hmm. Well, in God, there's only one. Mm -hmm. I am who the Bible says I am. Amen? Yeah. And I can do what the Bible says I can do. But in Him, I live and I move, and, and I have, have my, my being. being. Would you say that with me? In, in him, him, I live, and, and I move, move and, and I have, have my, my being. being. Amen. There was a lot of people that hated Daniel for his core values, for his excellence, but it promoted him, and they were jealous because of it. There are people that will disagree with our points of view regarding mm -hmm. faith, and the word and our stances on different things but you just stick to your guns Amen. it will promote you stick to your i core said it values. will promote you Amen. did you hear me it yeah. will promote you all right, right let's look at a good biblical definition of excellence hallelujah you go with it babe excellence could be defined as well in the dictionary it says extremely good outstanding preeminent we would agree with yeah. that. But this is how the Bible puts it in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31. Whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. Amen. Isn't that excellence? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Colossians 3 and 17. Whatever you do in word or deed, do mm -hmm. all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. Colossians 3 and 23. And whatever you do, do it heartily Amen. as to the Lord and not unto men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of the inheritance, for you serve the Lord Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So, and, so, excellence. Go ahead, sweetie. It's doing the very best with what you have right. to please God while having an eye to do better as you look for more opportunities. So it's doing the best that you can with what you have, always looking for an opportunity to increase that level of excellence. It's not being perfect. No, no, there is no perfection. Mm. Amen? Mm. So don't let that uh, hinder you. But, you know, when you think about excellence, the opposite of that would be average mediocre lukewarm lukewarm run so, of the mill. so so good so. enough is good enough you ever heard that good enough i gotta Close tell you enough is good enough that is so much in not in this house but in many churches yeah good enough is good enough mm -hmm. we have uh workmen that will come in to this house mm -hmm. and, and and i can think of the one copy man repair guy he would come in and he'd say, no matter when I come, the place always looks excellent. Praise the Lord. That's how it should I be. Love Amen. That. Amen. Amen. There is a book uh, that's called uh, An Enemy, The Enemy of Average. You ever heard of that by yeah. John Mason? Mm -hmm. It is a wonderful book. And I would encourage you all, An Enemy Called Average. And I would encourage you to get it. Because sometimes we don't realize that we have settled in to mediocrity. Yes. Yes. Sometimes we don't realize that we've settled into so-so. Right. And that really is a place of the heart. 
And uh, Jamie and I, we always pray, Lord, continue. Show us how to do it better. Show us how to uh, be more excellent, to be a greater steward about the things of God. Amen. That is an excellent spirit. The, that book, book is excellent. The, the greatest enemy of excellence is good because we think good, good is good great, enough. Yeah. And we get to a place of good and we get satisfied with that. Well, this is good enough and we don't press through and to excellence. And the thing about excellence is it takes time and energy and money <laughs> and effort and it can be exhausting and you just in this constant yeah. pursuit of trying to do it better and better to the best of your ability. And so you want to just kind of pull back a little bit and say, this is good enough. <laughs> Not in this house, amen? Come on and say, not here. But it is true. That's the world. That's the culture of the world. Yeah. You know, why uh, expend that extra energy? And why give so much detail? I got to tell you, people, since I had my eye done, oh, Jesus. <laughs> it's, my eye is wonderful. Do you like the makeup tonight? Yeah. Yes, we do. <laughs> yes, we I do. I said, Jamie, I'm back. <laughs> and, uh, but, you know, when you don't see clearly, mm -hmm. the word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path, right? Mm -hmm. So the word helps us to see clearly. So now that, you know, uh, I would be up here singing, and I could not tell you what those words were back there. I would have to glance up here to see the words. I was telling Jamie, I said, sometimes when I, I was driving, is it a car or is it a bush? <laughs> That's when I said, pull over, I'll drive. <laughs> I love this. No. I haven't had to drive that was since. The last, that's the last time she drove. <laughs> it's Pull been, over, Dale. It's been great. But when you can see clearly, there's a lot. I want you to hear me. When you can see clearly, when the spirit of excellence, and you're, you're saying, I will not settle for average. What does that mean? The Holy Ghost shows you something, bring it up to another level. You are quick to ask Holy Spirit, how do I do that? But since I, I was telling my sister Gail, I said, since I've had my eye done, oh, it's amazing what I can see that needs my attention. <laughs> you know, and Jamie just smiles. I'm like, I never saw that. Oh, my goodness. But it's all because you ask the Holy Spirit, listen to me, you ask the Holy Spirit, Reveal to me what I do not see. Amen. Would you give him thanks for that? Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Holy Spirit, reveal to me where I've settled. I've allowed the enemy of average to become my standard, or good enough is good enough. So you might want to truly, each of us, ask the Holy Spirit, where can I be more pleasing? See, Daniel, his heart was to be pleasing to the Father, to the Lord. He was not going to yield his uh, relationship with God for any king, for any position, but he was going to put God first. Amen. And because he put God first, the Bible says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things will be added unto you. When you seek God first in your heart, in your way of thinking, in your actions, in your behavior, in the things that you give attention to, when you put God first, what happens is he elevates you. The Bible says promotion doesn't come, what, from the east or the west, the north or the south? That's right. But it comes from, from God. Amen? Amen. It comes from the Lord. Amen. Now, this, this is a difficult message for the church, the worldwide church, is because the church has been trained on the idea of good enough is good enough. Be cheap. And be cheap. And if it's, it's okay if it's broken or if there's only three of the four legs to the chair or if, you know, 
we're, we're used to getting hand-me-downs from kind of things, and, and our equipment doesn't work quite right because we got it second generation from here and there. And we've taught ourselves that that's good stewardship, mm -hmm. getting the cheapest thing that doesn't work so great, but we didn't have to spend much money to do it. And Debbie and I are very fortunate that we got some good training if, under some great pastors yes. that said, listen, this is for God. And in scripture, we see that God was not cheap. And God wanted his kingdom to look good. Mm -hmm. And he wanted people that when they came up to the house of God to worship, to know they were coming someplace special. And it shouldn't be the, the Fortune 500 companies that have all the glitz and Hallelujah. the glamour. Amen. Now, now I'm not saying you have to gold plate the faucets in the bathroom. But I am saying you have to take care of the faucet in the bathroom. And the equipment, the look, the sound, the smell, we have to shine the apple as it were. And if we are going to get something, let's get something good. And the way we uh, do it around here and the way we were taught was if you're going to, if you can't afford it, save up for it. And, and maybe the piece of equipment you have right now isn't that great, but you're looking to do better. Yes. Save up for it so that you can get the piece of equipment that presents things the best it can for the gospel. Come on, say amen. Amen. And amen. so excellence <clears throat> is doing the best that you can with what you got with always an attitude or, or an eye out for trying to do better. Hallelujah. Looking for that opportunity. Yeah. Amen. I'm so glad when you come in that you don't have to pull your chair out and put it in the row. And when you come in, you don't have to remove a bunch of papers on your chairs. You'd be amazed what this place looks like on Sunday after church. What if we left it like that and you came in on Wednesday and it looked how, you know, the way it was when service was over? You don't have to be concerned with that. Why? It's because this house, the team, has a culture of excellence. Yes. yes. Amen. <laughs> Amen. All right. There's three qualities to excellence. Three things that excellence will do in your life that will propel you towards your hopes, your dreams, and your desires. And the first one is excellence will distinguish you and it will set you apart. The Amen. second one is excellence attracts others to you. And the third one is excellence will promote you. Amen. You so, want to take the first one? So we all need to pursue excellence. Yeah. Amen. So the first one, say it with me. Excellence, Excellence will distinguish, will distinguish me you and set me apart. And set me apart. One more time. Excellence, Excellence will, will distinguish, distinguish me and set me apart. me apart. Yes, it will. All right, let's look at Daniel chapter 6, verse 3 and 4. And they'll put that up there for us and let's read it together. Amen? Then this Daniel distinguished himself. Get it? What happened? Daniel did the work. Daniel distinguished himself. Now look at what the goal was and look at what he accomplished. Then this Daniel, read it with me, distinguished himself above the governors and satraps because... An excellent spirit was in him. And listen, and promotion came. And the king gave thought to setting him over the whole realm. All right, so the key is, all right, but let me go back one, go back one. That Daniel, he had a goal. He had an expectation for himself. Mm -hmm. He didn't allow himself right. to get mad at whatever happened to him. He didn't get set into the scheme and the trap of the enemy. He knew in his heart that God's hand was upon him yes. and that he, it was up to him for he distinguished 
himself. Yes. Amen? What if we That's distinguish good. ourselves mm -hmm. above everybody else that we're around? Amen? Because of God's excellent spirit within us. Okay, let's go to four. And it'll set you apart. Yeah. You're going to mm -hmm. look different than everybody mm -hmm. else because you're going to have that spirit. People are going to say, what? this guy is different. This gal is different than, than everybody else. Amen. Mm -hmm. So verse four. So read it with me. So the governors and satraps sought to find some charge against Daniel concerning the kingdom. Let's just stop right there. Mm -hmm. Have you ever had somebody jealous and speak evil about your promotion or about your excellence or the fact that, hey, you have distinguished yourself above everybody else. That doesn't mean you're better than, but what that does mean is there's a core value that dictates your life. Amen. Amen. And so that's good, all right? So, but, say but. But. They could find no charge or fault because he was faithful. Wow. They found nothing in Daniel because he was faithful. Faithful means consistent. And when you are consistent, mm -hmm. God can do some great things in you and through you. Amen? Mm -hmm. Say, I'm faithful. I'm faithful. And I'm consistent. And I'm consistent. All right. And the word says, nor was there any error or fault found in him. Who set this standard for his life? Daniel. Daniel did. And we can do the same. Amen. The idea is not to blend in. Yeah, that's key. The idea is to stand out, to be different. Yeah. Isn't that the truth? Amen. You want that which distinguishes you from everybody else. Don't be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the Amen. renewing of your mind. So the idea is not to blend in and just be one among many. The idea is to be in that top wow. one, two, three percent and to stand out and be different, have the different attitude, the different approach to things, to, to be excellent. Quick story. Quick, can I tell a quick story? Go for it, baby. I can't Ex wait to hear it. <laughs> as long as it's not at my expense. <laughs> well, it went like this. It did? Yeah, it did. <laughs> Back, in <the> <laughs> Back in the day. <laughs> Here we go, church. A long time it's ago. Back in the day. In a galaxy far, far away. A whole nother country. <laughs> I can't wait to hear it. <laughs> Come on, let's give me my hand. It's going to be good. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Back in the day. This story is not going to be worth it. I can, I can tell you right now. <laughs> Back in the day, the, the spirit of excellence as far as setting you apart and whatnot, when I was back in the Christian school days, uh, we would have accreditation every five years. And they would come in and they would examine everything uh, having to do with your school. And they would look at the books, they look at the finances, they would look at the teacher qualifications, they would look at curriculum, they would look at administration, <coughs> they would look at the philosophy of, of education, it just everything. They'd follow you home, go every through detail. your sock drawer. They, they went through everything in your life and they would spend three days looking at everything and you had stacks and volumes of books that you had prepared for them to go through and records and then you had to back up everything that you you said was going on and, and it was replete well anyways we had a crew come in and it would usually be about five people from different schools around the country that would come in and accredit your school and it was very intensive, lots of pressure, and uh, you'd spend a, literally a year getting ready for this three-day visit. Well, we, the crew came in, and they spent three days uh, with us, and went very, very well, got a very high rating. Uh, in fact, it was a perfect rating, the first school to get a perfect rating in 10 years. And the guy that was leading the group 
uh, met with me afterwards. And I said, wow, what a successful visit. We're so thrilled. It all went so well. He says, I could tell you that the minute we drove onto your property, I knew that you were going to do well. Wow. I said, how, do you, how would you know that? He said, because somebody cared enough to do the landscaping on this property so beautifully. The flowers were blooming, the hedges were trimmed, the grass was cut, everything was done beautifully. I knew if they took that much care outside that the inside was gonna line up with what was going on outside. Amen. That's, that's just the power of curb appeal. It, curb appeal is a powerful, powerful thing and the folks on that campus were amazing keeping the campus just absolutely beautiful and it just followed throughout the whole program but it was a mindset mindset yeah, yeah. it wasn't just that but you know what that campus looked like that every day yeah and so and that's the thing about a spirit of excellence mm -hmm. have you ever had somebody come to visit and all of a sudden you're like going through your house like a mad woman a mad guy and you're finding every place where you can stash this stash that you ever been there let's be real everybody but Marianne okay <laughs> <laughs> that is true but you know uh, but the thing the word says he had a spirit that's right. Of excellence. It wasn't yes, just right. that on Tuesday when the king was coming that he made sure everything looked good. That, that campus, because of you and the team, you had a spirit of excellence. And what was interesting, I found very interesting, was that when, uh, what did they call them? When, the, when they came to evaluate everything? The Inquisition. Yeah, but... <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'm being very kind. <laughs> but no, they were inspectors, or what were they? What are they called? Inspector Clouseau. <laughs> <laughs> so anyhow, so, but what I found was really amazing is they would come and go through the children's files through their every file every file every just file. to say did you have this in there did you have this and what order was it was everything consistent could you imagine how many students did you have 300 something so for 300 students that you had to do that for mm -hmm. and then on top of everything else uh, but it's a spirit of excellence and not just the fact that Hey, your sister's coming to town, hi, Gail. And so that your sister's coming to town. Hide and get, everything. Hide everything. <laughs> hide everything. Lock certain doors so they cannot be opened by mistake, right? <laughs> but, but, you know, that's what God wants us to have and the church to have, a spirit of excellence. Let me, let me read this quote from <clears throat> Jim Rohn. He says, walk away from the 97%. That's don't good. use their vocabulary. Don't use their excuses. Don't use their method of drift and neglect. They won't even eat an apple a day. They won't even refine their philosophy for a better life. Walk away and join the 3%. It starts with the first book you read. It starts with the first apple you eat. It starts with the first journal entry you make where those who read it say this is the work of a serious student who has committed to a whole new journey in life. Walk away. Wow. Got to walk away from the 97% that just aren't interested in excellence. Wow. That just aren't in, You know, there's a reason why the great artists are called the masters and their paintings sell for millions and millions of dollars because they're so good at it. There's a reason why people want to play Steinway pianos and Stradivarius 
uh, violins. There's a reason why people want to wear a Rolex or have their diamonds cut by Cartier because they're going to do it with excellence. A Steinway piano is an excellent piano. A Stradivarius is an excellent violin. So the best of the best, best of the, the best, best want that. They want the very best. Right. <clears throat> and I love what Jim Rome said. He said, nine, could you get your mind around that? 97% of the people that we have encounters with, whatever, they're just going through the day. But if you get the 3% that really want a spirit of excellence, and you, you know, I, I know some of you have businesses here, what if people walked into your place and said, I have never seen a business look so great? And I'm sure they probably do. Mm -hmm. But we need somebody, hear me, we need somebody to mentor us, somebody to show us the level of excellence. And you know, you hear me talk about Gail, maybe she's watching. But you hear me talk about her so often because I grew up with a big family. My father worked two jobs. My, what, my mother worked midnights. And so, you know, I, I got to tell you, it was Gail that really set the example of excellence in my life. She does she, have an excellent spirit. Yeah, yeah. she does. You, you could go to her house and you could eat on the floor. She I and, mean, she and Greg. She and Greg like are amazing. Mm -hmm. But you know, they modeled that. Mm -hmm. And she modeled that. And for us as a church, if the church needs to have that level of excellence, and we should, let us be the model. Let us, that doesn't mean we're perfect. That's not what mm -hmm. I'm saying. But we want a spirit of excellence so that all that we do can bring praise and glory unto the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Amen. Amen. Now, when, like Daniel, when we adopt that spirit of excellence, and it's the Holy Spirit, y'all have it in your hearts. When we adopt that spirit and we want to strive to walk in that grace of excellence, that will launch you yeah. forward to the very pinnacle of whatever you're seeking after. It doesn't make any difference what, what the profession is you're seeking after or where in life you're seeking after. But if you seek and desire to do things with excellence, you're going to be noticed. It will distinguish you. It will set you apart. It'll come down to the even the little tiny things that when you make out an envelope and you put that stamp straight in the corner rather than just any old which way you say now you're talking crazy pastor no if that stamp is lined up square in the corner excellence we teach that don't we make sure the stamp is straight because if it's just thrown on there it's like was this just a hurry thing did they really care about what they were mailing me that's so right. everybody, it's square, put it in that right-hand corner, and do it straight. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. This might be a good breaking point yeah. right here, because we're, we're at 820 Would you mind now. if we continued on Sunday? Amen. All right. So this is really such a big point. We, we've got to cover it, and, and it's big in our heart. We'd love to share it with you. So let's, let's break it right here. So remember, point number one, excellence will distinguish you, and excellence will set you apart. And then we'll get to point number two, where excellence attracts others to you, and that's very, very yeah. exciting. That's and a big point. And excellence will promote you. It will promote your business. And when you have an excellent spirit, Others will advertise for you. Yes, they Amen. will. They'll talk about your excellence. Right. Yeah, they'll talk about you. Because everybody's looking for someone who does it really who good. Who really cares about what they're doing. Isn't that true? Okay, let's stand together. Praise the Lord. Did you get anything out of this tonight? Okay, good.